just a victim to who I am. I'm your host, Steve Sisler. Stay tuned for another episode of Behavioral Insights. Holy crap, folks. Holy crap. Uh, This next podcast, number 19, is going to be based on a debriefing I just did uh, on somebody's concept of self. Stay tuned, because we're about to blow your mind. Okay, let's just get right into this profile here. All right, here's what we're looking at. Uh, An amazing, an amazing person, uh, an amazing female. Um, And I'm talking about probably 15 people like this out of 2,000 random people in the database. If I pulled out 2,000 random people, there's probably around 10 uh, with this kind of a profile in one respect, and then another respect, there's probably less than that uh, in another respect. But anyway, um, I want to talk about the self-concept or the concept of self. Um, And this goes back to things we've talked about previously here on the Behavioral Insights podcast, that everybody has a concept of others and everybody has a concept of self. And that concept is based upon your mental image uh, of what People are good people, bad people, and you as a human being, a good person, a bad person, this kind of a thing. Now, we're going to be touching back to um, touching back on the, the, the concept of axiology. And I talk a lot about it because that's what we do here. Um, and I'm just looking at some axiological scores here. So I'm, I'm going to bring up the empathy score, number one. So we've got crystal clear clarity on empathy, meaning they're coming in as a four, um, which is rare to have a four. And that means this person is borderline empath. Uh, so uh, super, super intuition. Able to see clearly, very clearly how other people and what kind of a response will be evoked in another human being when they do or say anything or make any decisions concerning anything that might affect another person in their life. They're crystal, crystal clear uh, when it comes to their perception of other people. And, oh, darn it. Uh, I'm going to have to stop and answer that. Hold on, I'll get right back to you. Okay, uh, I did just a random call. So I took it, and I'm not glad I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get back to uh, what, we're lock- what we're looking at and talking about right now. So we're talking about um, axiology, and we're talking about people types. We're talking about how we view the world, and this profile I'm looking at is a Oh my God, I just burped in the microphone. You know what? I've been drinking uh, this seltzer water, cranberry and lime juice organic that my wife just brought me. And it's it's not agreeing with me right now. So beware. Um, okay. Uh, let's get back to uh, what we're looking at here. The... This person's an empath. I'm just going to put it that way. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. I don't talk that way normally, but I'm going to call this person an empath because they kind of are. What's next? Um, They have super clear clarity when it comes to what to do in the world in an effort to reach certain results or targeted results. If they want to do something because they want to... um, uh, be somewhere or you know what this isn't working I'm reading email and I'm talking to you and I'm mumbling um, I gotta get out of the email 
Um, uh, I thought I could do both. It's not possible, folks, because the email is a red squirrel for me. Um, let me get my eyes on the profile. Let's start over. Uh, so strong execution ability, meaning they can perceive uh, what they need to do in an effort to reach a targeted result. They got, they're good there. And they're very balanced in their attention when it comes to those things, which means they are aware of the benefits of reaching that goal. They're aware of the risks involved in reaching that goal. Equally, it's sort of like both sides of the coin, folks. Head and tails, they see both, which is a very, very good score. Um, ah, now it's going to get interesting. We've got unconventionality here. And we've got a person who, when they look at the rules and they look at protocols and they look at traditional ways of doing things, uh, forecasting their future and so forth, unconventional and very unclear on top of unconventional. So not, so not only are they unable to see what they should do in certain situations to meet, quote, protocol, uh, their idea of what they need to do to do that is so far outside of what most people would actually do in that case that it puts them in an unconventional position. Um, and they're 65% negative. So when you say, all right, here are the rules, or we're going to lay the ground rules, folks, uh, her brain rolls her eyes. Um, here we go with the rules again. Great. Um, kind of a feeling. So this makes this individual a little arbitrary. And I happen to know that in their regulated thinking set and the value set in the IMO report that they did, they are subversive and defiant. So this individual is basically throwing up a middle finger at uh, existing protocols and systems that they've been a part of in their life, but they're behind glass. So that side of the world can't hurt them. Um, so very interesting. Um, this is going to make them more creative. So you have to be aware of the upside of a downside um, when reading these things or you're going to get messed up. Um, and so anyway, this person's creativity is is on a scale that is shockingly high. Um, so I have no worries about this situation at all. It's just brilliant. Uh, and they're very smart. Um, all right, I want to get to the self-concept because that's why I'm doing this at all right now, the self-concept. So we're looking at self-care. Now I'm measuring clarity levels from zero to 100. 100 is I see myself so clearly, I don't even know what to do with myself. Um, and zero is, I don't even know who I am. I, if you put a gun to my head, I couldn't tell you who I am. And they're a five. Okay. So this is not a good score. Um, and then on top of that, they're 100% negative when they start seeking to investigate themselves. All they can think about is what's missing or wrong. Um, there's zero energy into the opportunities that could be facing me, that I things I might be able to do, how I feel about myself, maybe even how I look. So basically, to, to build you a metaphor, this person's brain avoids mirrors. So, oh my freaking gosh. Um, uh, oh, I'm not going to answer that. Hold on a second. All right. Uh, so let me get back to this. Um, uh, you know, people, I wish they would just leave me alone. <laughs> that, that was the thought I just had. So I shot, I, I thought I'd share that with you. Um, all right. When it comes to, uh, I know I kind of led into another thought before I get cut off by that ring and I'm going to find that thought in a minute. So I'm just going to begin here and we'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Um, so I want to talk about their role in the world. So what is a role? A role is a mother, a daughter, a granddaughter, a teacher, a student, um, a technical person, a data organizer, a brain surgeon. So anything that you are doing uh, is, is what we call role awareness. So what is this individual's awareness level when it comes to what they're doing in the world? So who are you? That's self-esteem. And why are you here? That's role awareness. 
and their role awareness is an eight um, out of a hundred. So I do not know who I am and I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and then 95% negative on that. So only looking at what is wrong with what I am doing, what is missing when it comes to what I am doing and things like that. And then this final thing is ambition. So this is really about self-direction. I call it ambitions. So what are your ambitions? How clearly can you see your future? How clearly can you see where you need to go, what you need to do in order to arrive there? Um, so if I said to you, hey, where are you going to be in two years? This individual's brain goes, uh, I don't know. Um, and then when they start placing attention on the answer to that question, they're 75% negative. So this is known as a true negative. Um, true negative because everything's negative in the self-concept. Uh, so this individual's concept of self is basically, to be honest with you, non-existent. So this person is in the world, but they're not existing in the world. Now, when talking with this individual, I described it as the Witter, with the Wizard of Oz. Okay, the Wizard of Oz. So if you remember the Wizard of Oz, Dorothy Gale from Kansas uh, is on the bed being unconscious because she got hit by the window frame in the tornado. And then the house lands, you know, on the other side of the rainbow, this another world, so to speak. And previous to opening the door, of the cabin to where she can look out into the new world. The previous world was black and white. So that's really a, a, a cinematic way of, of showing you that there's this world and then there's that world and they're very different, right? So she opens the, the door and then everything from that point on in the movie is in color. So think about Dorothy Gale stepping outside of that room, opening that door and stepping outside to the other side of the rainbow and seeing everything in color and she's sort of just standing there in awe okay kind of mouth a little agape looking around bright eyed uh like where am i what is all this and my god the opportunities that are seemingly presenting themselves because now everything's positive because it's 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 in color this is what's going on in this profile all right um, what we're seeing here is an individual, this person's 23. Um, so we're seeing an individual that is basically emotionally like a newborn baby. I have yet to build a concept of self when it comes to who I am. I have yet to build a concept of self when it comes to what I do. And I've yet to build a concept of self when it comes to where I am going in the world. There's zero, there's nothing. There's no uh, clarity at all, none, zero, zilch, and there's no positivity at all, virtually none. Um, so basically, this is a newborn baby brain. Um, so I, I asked them about this, and okay, so they have moved away from a particular situation, they've moved away from certain people, they're establishing themselves in this quote, new world, and I've come out of this particular concept and now I'm entering a new concept and here I am in awe at the world. You know, where do I begin? What do I do? Now, how did this happen? Well, they lived a former life. So we're going to talk about Kansas. We're talking about Dorothy Gale in the black and white world. So this person lived in a world that was concepted, controlled and detailed and outlined and maps given coming from exterior sources, not, not her own, right? So she was living somebody else's concept for 20 some odd years. Um, and now that is gone, right? So she is now having to come up with her own new self-concept. So the outer direction for this person is really clear. It's strong. So that's fine. Um, gifts, of talents, uh, IQ, these are all stellar with this person. So I don't have any concerns here. 
Uh, matter of fact, I can't wait to see what happens with this person. So that's all great. But zero self-concept. So what was awesome was we got to talk about this person having to build a self-concept uh, because they don't have one. So what does that look like, right? So there has to be uh, 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 there has to be uh, a sense of self that you can believe in. Um, and for her to be extremely successful, which she's set up to be with all these numbers here, I mean, this person's success opportunity is through the roof. Um, and so uh, I, I just feel like I, I caught her at the right time. And it, this conversation, I just wish it was recorded. You would have freaked. It was so good. Um, but this person is now ready to launch, right? So they have to build a self-concept in order to launch well. Um, so what does that mean? It means gaining clarity and understanding and strong perception when it comes to her own personal self-worth. So this is her own intrinsic value. It's not there. Somebody else assigned it to her and she allowed that to happen. Uh, and what she did was she kind of farmed out her destiny to some other people um, and they were driving in the wrong direction. So um, that's all over. And now uh, she needs a new map, right? There's no, the map's gone. Um, there's, I, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know who I am. I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, I got dropped off in the middle of nowhere and I'm just standing around with my mouth open looking. This is emotionally where this person is. So I think, I really think this is excellent. This is good. So this is all opportunity right now. So as she begins to build on her self and her self concepts, she has to parse through what other people assigned her as a concept versus herself as a concept. So I asked her about that and this was so good because what she said was, well, you know, uh, people just didn't know me. They did not know who I was. Now, some of where I was, what was going on, all these different things, uh, were okay. So there are parts of me, even though they were assignments from somebody else, were, were accurate, but most of it not accurate. That's not me. So the cool thing is she knows who she is and she knows who she isn't. And she now has to basically uh, uh, let go of what anybody else thinks thought she was or wanted her to be so she has to be her own person and she has to uh, embrace herself for who she is and she has to let go of who she believes other people may want her to be uh, and then move forward in a world that way to the degree that she can embrace herself, no matter what anybody else thinks, will be the degree of success she's going to experience in the world. And that's what we talked about. So now I want to shift my thinking here to you. Um, where are you? Do you have a concept of self and is it legitimate? Are you living an illegitimate self or are you living a true concept of yourself? So that means who are you and are you proud of it? Or are you allowing other people to determine who you are in the world? Um, it's, it's very important that you get this because if you're doing that, you're allowing other people to contrive a concept of yourself then other people are framing your world. You're not framing it, okay? You can't live somebody else's life. You can't think somebody else's thoughts. And you can't change anybody else's mind. You are only responsible for you. And you are only responsible for your own happiness. 
Nobody else is responsible for your happiness and yourself and your self-direction and your self-concept other than you. You cannot farm any of that out to anyone. You can't farm it out to your parents. You can't farm it out to your siblings. You can't farm it out to your mate. You can't farm out your concept to another human being. You have to have your own concept. You have to be proud of that concept. You have to live that concept. And if they don't like it, then guess what? There's the door, all right? It's that strong. I I mean it that much. You can't do that, all right? So what's wonderful about the situation uh, I was just dealing with is they are now beginning to build their concept. So they have ideas about themselves. They have thoughts about themselves that are making them feel good and feel happy. And the only time they're experiencing unhappiness is when they are tying themselves to what other people hoped or expected or desired or wanted, and then it didn't happen. And then there's a reverse tie where now this individual is looking at other people in their lives Uh, where they're saying, I wish they were thinking like me. I wish they were doing what I did because I feel like they're not doing the right thing. So this goes both ways. You cannot do what you don't want done to you. So you can't expect other people to stop living your life and then you start trying to live theirs for them in your mind. You can't do that. There has to be a complete, utter separation between you and anybody else in the world. You know, part of parenting is separating yourself from your children so that they they can become their own self uh, and then go out into the world and be themselves apart from your thoughts about what you think, what you desire, what you want, and all that jazz. Now, this is something I learned uh, growing up and becoming a dad and having children and having three children uh, all over the age of 24 um, uh, and just looking at my life um, uh, you know there you know back when I was in the church there was a verse a Bible verse that floated around a lot and it had to do with parents and children and here's how the verse went and it was a quote from King Solomon and it said this train up a child in the way that they should go and then when they become old older they will not depart from it we were always taught and when i say we were always taught i'm talking 1963 all the way up to probably 1980 okay i was always taught that what that meant so when you farm out your intelligence to somebody else you're stuck with what they think even if they're stupid and that can be a problem so you got to be really careful you got to use your own intelligence. You can't be farming that out to people who you believe may be smarter than you because most people probably aren't. Um, some are, yes, and uh, but still, you're not farming it out. You're not even renting it out. Um, you retain your own intelligence, and you deal with that on your own terms, but don't be farming that out to anybody. Um, so anyway, I was taught that training up a child in the way that they should go is you got to raise the kid to think like you so when they get older, they'll be just like you. That's basically, in a nutshell, how most people took that verse. Now, uh, I investigated this and, you know, read, read the Hebrew and you know, went all into that to figure out what does this really mean because, you know, I'm a high theoretical. I want to know if this is right, if this is wrong. And boy, was it ever wrong. What it really means is find out what your children's self looks like and then provide opportunity to become more of it. That's all it means, so that when they get older, they'll be able to be themselves and they won't be you. It's the absolute opposite. Um, And so uh, training up a child in the way that they should go, not in the way you think they should go, or to copy the way you went. Not that. You know, uh, what parents tend to do automatically is they just try to infuse their children with their beliefs, their thoughts, their fears, their everything, And then when they mirror that back to them, they feel like they've been a good parent. Um, Nothing could be further from the truth. You want to find out who is this creature and how is this creature wired and what makes this creature happy and this, that, and the other, and then provide opportunity for that individual, that child to be their best self before they leave your house. That's how it's supposed to be work. And I wasn't perfect at it. But I'm really good at it now. Um, And so um, 
uh, there's no time for regret, right? Um, so if it diminished my kids, we've had that conversation probably twice. Um, and so hopefully we're all good now. Um, but the point I want to make is, uh, your job isn't to tell, uh, somebody how to live. It's to help them live their life. Now that doesn't mean, um, you're given, they want a shotgun at age two. So you go give them one. Don't get nuts here. Um, this is all within, you know, true logic and reason. Um, there are absolutely some things that are terrible for people and that's not what I'm advocating. So I don't even want you going there. Um, so it's really about helping people discover who they are in the world and providing opportunities for them to be the best version of that as possible. Cause that's who they're going to be folks. And that's who they actually are. Uh, and to the degree that we're, we're, we're raising a left handed child to write right handed by binding up their limb uh, you know, as some people used to do, that basically breaks their brain. Uh, so w- you don't want to do that. Um, anyway, I kind of got off on that. But uh, so for moving forward, um, super powerful. Uh, uh, what are we talking about? We're talking about self-concepts. What is your self-concept? And is it accurate? Or is it somebody else's? And for the life of you, you can't figure out why you're feeling negative or you're looking out and you have no self-direction, you have no self-concept, you're unable to direct your own course, so you're more dependent on what other people are telling you to do, and other people giving you roadmaps, and other people helping you get to where you want to go. Are you living a life of hoping things work out and doubting they hope out? Are you living a life of making things work out and imagining what it would be like if it did work out, and then looking for opportunities for that to take place in your life? Or do you feel stuck? All right. So these are real important things to think about. And to the degree that you don't feel like you're able to live your own life, uh, then you might need to get some help uh, to live the life you want. And that might mean, you know, assigning yourself to somebody uh, as a good friend or a mentor or something like that who believes in you, understands you and uh, uh, is able to help you be the best version of yourself as possible. Um, well, I'm going to end it right there. Um, uh, uh, I appreciate you guys all tuning in. Um, you've been listening to episode 19, uh, your self concept. Uh, this is Steve Sisler, and this has been behavioral insights. Mm-hmm.